Supplementing on heat transfer vinyl does work, but is it worth it? Is it worth the extra work and cost? Hands down, one of the best methods that I've used for full color shirts is sublimation. If you have your settings dialed in correctly, sublimation has some of the best long lasting vibrant images. Honestly, you can't really compare much to it. Sublimation is fantastic. Images never fade or crack and have the most vibrant colors. But unfortunately, as we all know, sublimation has its downsides. For one, in order to get those vibrant images, you're limited to light colored garments, with white shirts being the best. Reason being, sublimation doesn't print white. So if you try to put it on a black shirt, it's not gonna show up. And another downside, when you're using t-shirts, you're limited to polyester garments. Let me get in here really fast and just quickly mention, because I just realized this while I was editing the video. While you are limited to polyester garments, they don't have to be 100% polyester. At a minimum, you should have at least 60% polyester and 40% cotton for best results. Look at it this way. If you have a shirt that's 50% cotton and 50% polyester, 50% of the ink, pretty much what's on the cotton, is going to wash away. So it'll give it a faded, extremely vintage look. Mostly faded, not really vintage. So at a minimum, try to stick to at least 60% polyester. You can't sublimate on cotton. At least, not directly. Cotton t-shirts are a lot more widely available than polyester t-shirts and a lot of people prefer black shirts versus a white shirt. So that makes getting a full color image on your average t-shirt a lot harder than you'd like it to be. So naturally being a part of the business, people got crafty and decided to find a way around it. Now there's a ton of different ways that people have found to sublimate on cotton. Some of the more popular methods include sublimating onto specialty HTV, sublimation sprays, and most recently a DTF sublimation hack. Now, personally, the DTF sublimation hack isn't really my cup of tea, but I do know a lot of people that have had success with it. Ultimately, it's up to you if you like it and if you want to keep using it. I never really got too into sublimation sprays because I kept hearing that after a wash, they would start to fade because the spray itself would start to come off. I'm really not too sure how well they worked, but I don't see them as popular as the vinyl method, which I tried a bunch of times and honestly, it worked. Sublimating on heat transfer vinyl does work, but is it worth it? Is it worth the extra work and cost? Now, before we get into my experience with sublimating onto heat transfer vinyl and whether I think it's worth it or not, let's talk a little bit about sublimation itself. As previously mentioned, it works with polyester and light colored garments. Any sublimation printer out there, whether it be an industrial sized one or a home inkjet one that was converted for sublimation, is not gonna print white. So right off the bat with sublimation, you're always gonna have a problem sublimating onto any dark colors, unless you have a white base under it, which is where heat transfer vinyl comes in. Heat transfer vinyl provides that white base so that way when you sublimate onto it those colors really pop if you're using the right kind of vinyl you can't sublimate on regular heat transfer vinyl it would be great if you could sublimate onto basic white heat transfer vinyl right turns out you can't it doesn't work the image is either gonna come out faded or the paper is gonna get stuck to the vinyl itself and if the image does come out somewhat vibrant it's gonna wash off or it's gonna get blurry after a wash but that's with regular heat transfer vinyl what about the specialty ones like let's say glitter glow in the dark flock those are the more commonly used types of heat transfer vinyl that are used to be able to sublimate onto. Now, they're not necessarily meant to be sublimated onto. Their original purpose was not that. It was just for the effects that they had. But after some trial and error, people found out that you can sublimate onto them. But is it worth it and does it last? Honestly, that really depends on what type of heat transfer vinyl you're using. Now, I haven't used every type of sublimatable vinyl out there, but the handful that I have used, I can say that it works for a bit. In my experience with all of the different heat transfer vinyls that I've sublimated onto, they all end up blurry after a few washes. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is, you know? It's not necessarily meant to be sublimated onto, so it's not really protected against something like being in a washer or a dryer. Maybe once or twice, yeah, but not over and over again. I think these methods are great for novelty shirts and one-off shirts because they provide some really cool effects. You can get a glow-in-the-dark effect, you can get the soft flock feel to it, you can get glitter, so that way your image on the shirt can get some sparkle behind it, and people love that, especially for like birthdays and events. People love that kind of thing. Also, if you're in a pretty tough spot and need a shirt for like tomorrow for a birthday, that's a great way to improvise and get it done. But let's say you have a customer that needs some full color shirts, I don't know, something on the chest or maybe just a logo, and needs these shirts for work, and they're gonna be used every day and maybe washed weekly, if not more frequently than that. Honestly, I wouldn't go with this method. This is not something I would use for that. First off, one of the more annoying things in doing this is being able to align the image itself with the heat transfer vinyl. It's hard, especially if you have a detailed image with a bunch of different breaks in the middle, it's going to be really hard to be able to align them and get everything perfect so that way there's no extra white spots. There's two ways that I found that can help you with that. One of them is getting a light pad and sticking it under the shirt so that way you can see where everything's aligning. And another way that really helps out is include bleed in your prints. When you include bleed in your prints, it includes a little extra ink on the edges and it can help cover up some of those misaligned spots on the vinyl. Now, while those tips do help you align things and make things a bit easier, it's still a lot more work. And if you're doing 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 shirts, it's going to be a lot of work, trust me. Now another thing that you need to account for is 
the extra cost. When you sublimate onto vinyl, you're using sublimation ink, sublimation paper, and vinyl. All of that stuff adds up. I know sublimation paper and ink, for the most part, is fairly cheap, especially if you have a converted Epson, but ultimately, the more stuff you use, the more money you're gonna be putting into a single shirt. Some people might not mind the extra cost because it's not a whole lot, but some people might. That's really up to you and if you're comfortable spending the extra couple cents or dollars. Now, in my opinion, the biggest downsides to sublimating cotton are focused mainly on t-shirts because they have to be washed. But there's also a lot of other applications that you can use this method for and have some really spectacular results. For one, you can sublimate onto a canvas frame. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. If you wanna learn how to do that, it's gonna be in the playlist that I'm gonna have linked down below and I'm also gonna have it linked separately in the description. So there's a few different ways you can do that and there's a bunch of different effects that you can get out of it too. And the best part about these is that they're not gonna be washed, so that color is gonna stay on there. Sublimating onto canvas is just one of the things that you can do. You can grab a piece of wood, maybe something from Michael's, one of those little flat pieces of wood, slap some heat transfer vinyl on there, sublimate onto that, and you have a pretty cool little new piece. Whether it be a coaster, decoration piece, whatever it may be, it's new, unique, and it's gonna last. These are things you're gonna have to find out for yourself. You're gonna have to find out whether or not it's suitable for your business, whether it's suitable for your needs, if you like the quality, if you like the durability, and whether or not you should use it. Remember, in this business, pretty much everything is personal preference. It's whether it works for you. As I always say, and I can't stress enough, what works for me might not always work for you and what doesn't work for me could potentially be your favorite method. It's all personal preference. I just like to give my experiences so that way it can make things a bit easier for all of you and hopefully save you some time and money. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button. I always appreciate everyone being here. Thank you so much again and catch you guys next time. Peace.